Um, so I've got I've got two more questions for you here before we unless we unless more comes up, which it very well may. Um, um, so but this first one and we were messaging back and forth a bit and you said something to me one of the messages that I wanted to touch on and I thought it was very, very cool. And I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more. So mm -hmm. men learning to channel the power of their sexual energy is an intentional way and in how it or in an intentional way, I'm sorry, and how it can enhance every area of their lives. And, and I just wanted to, now we've already talked about this just a little bit, but you specifically mentioned um, like non-ejaculatory orgasms, becoming multi-orgasmic, et cetera. Um, and I just wanted to ask you if you would go in on that just a little bit, um, talk to me about a little bit or the, the, talk a little bit about those things with me. Like why do those things matter and why are those things important? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of my favorite topics. Mm -hmm. So you guys as men have a very fiery sexual energy. Um, the Taoists see this as, as like young, masculine, fiery, directive energy. And it is powerful, like amazing stuff that you guys are channeling. But what happens because it's the, the nature of fire, you know, untamed fire can burn the whole world down and destroy it. And, and we see that happening in many ways on this planet right now. Whereas channeled fire, fuels it, warms it, you know, brings, brings light and warmth and radiance. And so this is energy that needs to learn how to be channeled effectively to where you, you're in the driver's seat. Like it's not whipping you around where like you, your, your dick totally controls you. You know, it's, it's something that you're cultivating from this conscious place. There's a connection to your heart. It's an integrity with the rest of your being. It's not just this thing that's getting you in trouble or getting the best of you or, you know, making you susceptible to manipulation, whatever it is. We want to learn how to harness the power of this fire this is like your greatest superpower it's, it's what we create yeah. life with our sexual energy and so Absolutely. what else can we create yeah. with it if not new life right mm -hmm. and so that's what brings me to the point of non-ejaculatory orgasm is an ejaculatory orgasm serves a specific purpose to create new life and obviously they feel really awesome and obviously we're not usually trying to create new life when we ejaculate so it's it's one of the types of experience, um, one of the types of pleasure that you're able to experience as a man, but there's, you know, there's some ways that it can actually be depleting to your energy and even, even deeper than that though, what we're really trying to cultivate here is ejaculatory choice. So it's not about like whether or not you ejaculate, ejaculate, do you feel at choice as to when and if you ejaculate. That is true mastery of your sexual energy, being able to be so embodied and listen to that energy and move with it in a way that feels good to you rather than it just getting like sucked out of you unintentionally, like not being able to work with, with that power, that, that pleasure that's moving through you. So a lot of times, you know, somebody who is having premature ejaculation issues, this can often be because they feel like life or their partner is sucking them dry and it manifests physically. It just like pulls it right out of them um, and they don't have any control over it. They're not centered in their ability to navigate that energy uh, with intention. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously this leads to lots of things like feeling insecure about sexual performance, feeling like you can't please your lover, feeling like you're not in control in any way. And so when we learn to circulate our energy and cultivate this ejaculatory choice, not only does that, that sense of choice and empower, empowerment permeate every area of our lives, but we can also move into the realm of non-ejaculatory orgasm, becoming multi-orgasmic, where we are keeping this vital life force energy inside of us rather than shooting it out and, you know, often literally flushing it down the toilet. This is the energy that you create life with. And there's so much more you can channel it into when you're keeping it within your body. And so, you know, a lot of people don't know that ejaculation is a response to orgasm. It's not the same as orgasm. They can be separated. And so when you have an ejaculatory orgasm, 
you're getting this big dump of um, prolactin and neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, your body goes into this refractory period of, okay, like biologically, my mission is complete. I, you know, like I procreated and I can like check out, roll over and go to sleep. That's where a lot of that um, kind of lack of motivation or desire, you know, not no longer desiring to connect with your partner, feeling tired, feeling lazy, whatever you might feel after ejaculation, that's where that comes from. It's like this, this loss of life force energy that you just shot out of your body. Your organs need to recuperate. You've got this huge dump of, you know, neurotransmitters and, and prolactin. Um, and then your body needs some time to recharge. So mm -hmm. if you're keeping that energy within you, you're not having this big dump and you're actually recharging and revitalizing your entire being. And it can open you up to having many full body implosive orgasms rather than explosive. So you're not ejaculating, but you're having this very deep rolling uh, type of orgasm. That's a fundamentally different type of orgasm moving through your whole being. And so that allows for greater stamina, greater pleasure for both you and your lover. And this deeper sense of like, okay, I'm in the driver's seat here. And I'm not just like totally at the effect of my sexual energy, but I, I have this deep relationship with it. And that, that just touches every area of your life. Absolutely. You know, that's actually some really high level stuff that you're talking about. And, you know, and a lot of people, I don't think that many people understand that having that kind of personal mastery is even possible. Like, mm -hmm. I really think there's a lot of people who just literally do not, they, they would probably say something like, like 25 year old me, if I, you know, heard you say that I would probably say, oh, well, maybe some people can do that. Like, that's not, you know, that's, I can't do that, you know, like, but, but you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, the semen retention guys are kind of onto something. They're onto half of that. Have yeah. You, you got, yeah. Yeah. And so they're onto that half of it. However, you're taking it to a whole nother, like there's a whole nother half of it that you're including, which is very, very vital, which is the, which is the, the enhancement of your sexual experiences and your ability to, you know, enjoy them or navigate them as you want to, without mm -hmm. being a slave to your biological responses, right? So it's like you take control of that. And it is a very meditative thing. That's super, super awesome, actually. Yeah, men, men should, uh, men should talk to you about that, because <laughs> that's a very, that's really, really important. And, and, uh, and uh, the C, so what, the semen retention guys, like, I kind of like those guys, like they're onto a lot of that, you know, but they, but they, I'm afraid sometimes that they do miss the vital aspect of connecting with another human in, mm -hmm. in the same spectrum, like right? in the same conversation. So like, um, a lot of it involves like, like no porn, you know, which is okay. That's good. I actually advocate no porn for men. If mm -hmm. men want to take better control of their sexual destiny. Right. I, I think there's many, many benefits. Um, my, my official stance is to at least cut way back, if not altogether. Um, however, then you have a void. What, what do you substitute? Real connection with real people. Like go out and have real connections. Like why I tell men, instead of watching porn for an hour, go out and meet girls for an hour. You know, go meet women, go talk to people, go expand your social circles, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, that's super, super valuable stuff. I hope you write a book on that someday because because I'd recommend it because the, that's something that most men just never even hear about in everyday life. Like that's not talked about at all. Totally. And yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought, brought up, you know, seminal retention is just half of the equation, because then if you're abstaining from orgasm, and especially if you're just not engaging this energy, you know, some men, they're doing seminal retention by just kind of edging and just choosing to not come. Some men are ignoring their sexual energy entirely. When we ignore or repress this energy, it becomes this stagnant, icky, mucky swamp, or it becomes this like thing that wants to explode. It needs to flow. Sexual energy is the elements of water. It needs mm -hmm. to flow like a rushing vital river. We need to engage it. That doesn't mean we have to be having sex with somebody. It can be through our self-pleasure practice. It can be through internal martial arts like Qigong, working with our breath, you know, movement, just keeping that energy flowing. 
but if we try to ignore it, it's going to fester and bubble up. And this is where we get like weird perversions that come out and people, you know, people that go into celibacy, but then end up like molesting people. And it's because they're not engaging that energy uh, consciously. This is our life force. Like we, the more you try to stuff it down, it's like you're trying to, you know, put your thumb over a hose. It's eventually just going to explode. So this is really taking it a huge step further where you get to have your cake and eat it too. You know, you're not abstaining from orgasm and pleasure um, and you're, you're using that energy to nourish your entire being. And so that's a very important distinction. And, you know, a lot of people, it is so out of their realm of awareness of what's possible with their sexual energy that they're like, oh, well, I couldn't do that. You know, it's, it's really not that hard. It just takes discipline. It takes practice, just like anything else. You know, if you've ever learned yeah. to play yeah. an instrument or speak a language, like you don't get it just overnight, you've got to put some love into it. And, you know, luckily, yes. like this is a fun thing to put some love into. <laughs> so Absolutely. It's, um, as long as you want it, you know, it's, it's really the type of thing that what you put into it exponentially correlates to what you get out of it. And, you know, I think there's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know about it and a lot of people are deeply disconnected to their sexual energy. And I don't think that this is like so on accident that we have these puritanical roots and that we've always been like told by the authorities, the establishments not to connect with our sexual energy because they know that sexually empowered people are a force to be reckoned with. You know, when we want to domesticate an animal what do we do? We castrate it. Um, this has happened to, to slaves all over the world since the beginning of time, you know, castrating them to render them docile and complacent. And yeah. so when we step into our sexual energy, of course, it's going to touch every area of our lives because that is, that's, that's the core of what we're made of. It's so deeply powerful. And so if it's something that you want, you know, as long as you believe you're you're capable of, of achieving this, you absolutely are. If you put the energy into it and you believe it, um, it's it's possible for anyone. So yeah, I haven't written a book on it yet, but I do have a class on it called Multi-Orgasmic Vitality, and it's starting up again in April. Uh -huh. And it's a really amazing journey that goes into God, like everything we've talked about today, really. It's it, it's so much bigger than just the act of non-ejaculatory orgasm, but how it touches every piece of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. It's um, sexual mastery is a skill. And just like, just like I talk so much in my, in my like work about how dating and attraction are skills, you know, a lot of people don't like to think of it that way. They just like think, well, I am what I am and whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. That's the lazy way out. It is a skill. You have to work on it. And then people will be like, um, you know, they'll be like, well, it should just be natural. It's like, it will be natural, but you have to learn how to use those skills so that you create those natural opportunities for yourself. And so that you know what to do with them when they happen, you know, and so you don't ruin it. <laughs> so you're not like me when I was, you know, 25 years old and just, you know, put your foot in your mouth and then, you know, choke on it every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, it, and you know the interesting thing is it is natural but there's so many things throughout the course of our lives that have blocked the natural flow of that like the way we've been conditioned by poor or the or the traumas we've experienced or if we've had deep uh programming around sex and shame i mean all of these things block that natural flow so it is a skill it's like we have to unpack all of that and and rewire the way that we relate to it so that we can connect to it from a place of empowerment and tap back into that natural expression that wants to move through us. Awesome. All right. I got one more question for you and I wrote this one out and then, you know, I, I just want you to just, you know, approach this from whatever position you think is the best one and just go for it. So in your opinion, where is it going wrong for men? Like, where are they suffering? Where are they failing? Where do they need to start? What's the first step? Mm. I really think that's so much of the disconnect for a lot of men. I'd say it's a combination of lack of presence, lack of embodiment, being too in the head and that goal orientation. Um, we, we don't want to work on sexual mastery so that we can get this from a woman or like, so that, you know, it, it needs to come from a place of deep intention 
of like, I want this for me. I want this deep fulfillment and I want to show up to meet whatever that looks like in each moment without having this attachment to I'm going to do this work on myself. And my expectation is that it's going to reflect in this specific way back to me. Um, this is one of the things that I think a lot of men don't understand about women is they think, you know, they, they, they miss the point of what it means to listen and to be receptive and to recognize that what worked for the last woman might not work for this one. What worked for this woman yesterday might not do it for her today. We are these constantly evolving, changing beings, even our, in our hormonal cycle. I mean, we change so much throughout the course of a month and you know how we communicate, what our mood is like, how our sexual energy flows. And so if you're in this place of expectation or having a script in your head or trying to get it all right, rather than just showing up to listen to the moment, to be present, listen to your body, listen to their body, listen to get a feel for what the lay of the land is, right? Like you don't want to, you don't want to throw in a spanking when you're in the middle of like this really deep, like sentimental, sensitive kind of place that would be like totally out of context. You want to like feel what is this moment asking for? And then listen, like, how did she respond to that? How am I responding to that? There's, there's a deep listening that I think a lot of the men are, are missing the mark on because they're attached to what they want something to be. And so this is this applies to the self-pleasure practice too, of can you just listen to what's moving through your body rather than attaching to that orgasm and chasing that ejaculation, pinning it down as fast as you can, but can you just listen to what wants to move through you and, and expand and prolong your pleasure? rather than uh, getting stuck in, in your mind's idea of what you think it's supposed to look like, because it can probably be way more magical and epic than what your mind can conceive of if you make space for that to come through. Absolutely. When you talk about, you know, the evolution of a person and what a woman might want today, maybe different than what she wants tomorrow, like that mm -hmm. is, so that's something that might give men a bit of anxiety you know, to think of, however, it's actually a very beautiful process when you can just observe and be present. Cause it's like, you know, she might feel differently today than she did yesterday. How fascinating, like why, like, and what made it change? Like, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. the greatest lovemaking happens when you just talk, to be honest, which sounds like a strange thing, um, you know, but that's, it's not so strange because humans are the most, they're just so complex and fascinating, you know? And so, so like what's going on with them and, and then, in, in the reverse side of that, when you are present like that and you can just kind of observe and you can be mindful of the evolution, you're going to find that you're going to connect with people on such a deeper way, which is going to also, well, it's going to make you a better partner too and a better lover. And it's going to obviously open up a lot more what I would call like extraordinary opportunities for experiences with people, you know, who you're connecting with, which is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's just that openness, being willing to show up to each present moment. And yeah, and I, and I see how that could almost cause more anxiety. And if you look at it from the perspective of like, there is no getting it right, you know, yeah, there is yeah. no like one size fits all right, you get to show up to each moment and ask what is this moment calling for and if you can let yourself off the off the hook of getting it right, and you can just show up here and now. That's, that's what takes it away from showtime and brings it back to playtime, you know, and that's, that's where that real authentic connection can unfold between two people. Awesome. I love it. All right. Soraya Leonara. Did I pronounce that right? This, the last. Soraya Leonara. Soraya yes. Leonara. Awesome. Um, her links are down below. Please click on them and go check her out. If you're interested in anything that has to do with, uh, sex and relationship coaching in regards to anything that we have talked about thus far or um, anything even remotely related, check it out. Um, Soraya, I really appreciate you being on. Thank you so much. I feel like you just brought a ton of value and I'm super, super excited to hear um, the feedback for this. And so we'll be in touch. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Josh. It's been a pleasure to be here. And I hope everyone found this really insightful and valuable. I do have uh, multiple online courses, so please do check them out. Let me know how I can continue to support you. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a beautiful day. Thank you so much.